testing, testing volume and distance, testing how I sound, sound, how do I sound? Hello, Star Boys. So in, in this video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I recorded all the footage and I'm going to be voicing over it. And I'm going to be talking about what I'm doing on screen, which will be weird and awkward because I'm weird and awkward. Very, very awkward all the time. I also did this because I needed to speed up the footage uh, making a galaxy stamp, which is what I'm doing in this video. I'm making a few of them because I made way too much wax. Um, it takes a lot of time, like more time than I can edit or voice over with my schedule. I do a lot. I do. I do a lot of things. Too, too many things. I mean, I was told today by somebody 13 years younger than me that maybe I should learn to relax a little, like learn to take some time off. <laughs> and I was like, nah, man, I have no chill. I really don't have any chill. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't believe this is true, but I'm like a hummingbird. If I stop, I just die, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I'm supposed to be explaining what's happening on screen and I haven't done that yet. This is me creating a master batch. Later in the video, you're going to see me using a solid pigment and that pigment is being made right now. A master batch is when you mix a strong pigment with a component of your final product so that you can add the pigment without adding too much. It gives you better control over it. I am using oxide pigments. This is an oxide black, so it's not mica based and it's very strong, so I'm watering it down a little bit, making it a little easier for me to control. I've been uncomfortably existential lately. Uh, I've considered creating a darker series where I talk about some darker things, but this isn't it. So instead, I'm gonna tell you a story about the time my dog bit me because I zipped him up inside of a sleeping bag that I was also inside of. It was common knowledge that that dog didn't like me. Uh, this is also the dog that ate all the crayons and pooped colors from one of my other videos I talked about. It was an interesting pupper for sure. So sidebar quickly, I'm supposed to be telling you what's happening on screen. Right now I am making the base for my wax with hot glue and paraffin wax and micro crystalline wax. And I'm not going to show that again in this video. Every clip after this is just going to start with that already made because it's the same every time and you've seen it in all of my videos, at least some version of one of my recipes. Now back to the funny, I got bit by a dog story. That's not normally a funny story, but it is because it's about me and I'm telling it. So the, the dog that bit me, he was a Shetland sheepdog. His name was Shadow. He wasn't black, but his name was Shadow. <laughs> Man, it is much easier to formulate my thoughts and talk and tell stories when I'm not trying to do it while I am making my stuff, doing my thing, you know? So Shadow, see, I, I said that and then I, then I immediately lost my train of thought right after that. Dang me, dang dog it. So Shadow, he was a dog, yep. So the story goes, I was playing a game. I used to play this game where I was like shipwrecked. I had a very vivid imagination as a kid. And I was shipwrecked and I was shipwrecked with my dog and we had to have to survive or something like that. And I don't exactly remember why I got in the sleeping bag with the dog, but all I know was I needed to like survive and we had to keep our warmth or something. So I get in the sleeping bag and I like drag the dog with me. I was pretty young, by the way. And I zipped it close from the inside by like gripping the little inside of the zipper and then the dog got pissed about being trapped in there with me. And it was like, ah, woo, 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 you know, and that's pretty much the whole story. It's, it's pretty funny. Man, I've been, in one of the, I've been in one of those moods lately. I have been in one of those moods lately. I need to slow my roll when I'm talking and enunciate. Uh, I've been in one of those moods lately where I just want heaps of trash, just trash TV, trash reading, trash comics, trash video games. I just want my eyes to be trash shoots and to funnel it in. No quality control, you know, none at all. Just pour it right into my face. Luckily, I live with wonderful people who don't judge me because they also love trash. 
So I don't have to worry about things I used to with some other roommates I've lived with who would like walk in and then judge me and I would just curl into myself and die. One of the best parts about doing this as a voiceover instead of doing this like as I'm working is that I can start record anywhere I want for the voiceover uh, since I'm doing it on my phone even though I do plan on getting a real mic set up eventually, I promise. Right now I'm in my car. And it reminded me of a story I wanted to tell you guys, uh, because I always like to tell interesting stories while I do this. And I don't know how interesting this is, but it is about me almost getting in a horrible car accident. So I'm actually not in my car anymore. I don't know if you've noticed maybe a quality change, but my mic came and I got it set up. So now I'm using that and we'll see how it goes. So back to the almost car accident. This is a pretty short story. It was just like the, the lanes were splitting. One was becoming a single lane, the other one an exit only. Some older woman in her car, because she was driving, why did I say in her car? <laughs> Sorry. She just started merging over into my lane as she I guess she decided she didn't want to exit as if it was a zipper merge and I would just, I don't know, move out of her way, but I couldn't because there was cars all around and I barely managed to gun in front of her. I was honking the whole time. She didn't react at all. Like, she didn't change speed. She didn't look at me. She didn't acknowledge that I honked at her. It was kind of crazy. What you're seeing on screen right now, especially when I was mixing the white powder in, that was a black light powder reacting to something in my wax mixture. And I don't know, I don't know how dangerous that was while I was doing it. I just kind of like hoped for the best and decided to keep going. Uh, it turned out okay in the end. You'll see, hopefully, in a second. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know uh, why that fizzed or what gas it was giving off. So, you know, remember back in my video about making wax and all the warnings about experimenting? Some of the stuff is not super uh, vetted. It's kind of all still a little experimental, unlike the other video's recipe. <laughs> Oops. But I should tell the story about the time I actually got hit in Maine. I was in a car. I wasn't hit by a car while I was outside of a car. That'd be crazy. And also, you know, I mean, that happens to people. This story is a little longer though. It was like the opening of a movie where the main character just is done. They just can, don't have any more left and they need a way to show the audience that. So they create the scene I am about to explain to you. So the scene opens and it's raining and I have to go to the pharmacy to pick up my prescription before I go travel and I'm going to be driving in the car that I was currently in. It's also not my car, which makes this a little bit worse. I come to a stop sign on the way back home and there's an older man who needs to turn left at the intersection and he just starts going even though I had the right of way. So I stop and it's like a moment before it happens, I realize that he has cut his turn too close to me. So when he hits me, it's at my front right, uh, no, front left light in that part of the bumper. And he just rubs the entirety of his SUV right across the bumper and headlight. And it's like a slow, almost like five or six second long collision as he just drags the side of his car along the front of mine. As I sat there and the, the metal against metal sound was happening, I just closed my eyes. It was like, this isn't happening. <laughs> it's funny now, now thinking back on it, I laugh because it's like the, the perfect opening to a movie where they have to convey that the main character is just done, like I was saying before, and I was done. The real kicker though, I'm getting loud now. The real kicker though, is that when, the collision finally ended. I finished my turn because my car wasn't so bad off I couldn't drive it. It was it was Dust's car. It was my roommate's car, but the car, I guess. And uh, the older man pulls over on the other side of the road and he gets out of his car and he asks me, did I hit you? And I'm like, how did you not notice that eternity long collision we just had? It was incredibly loud too, like the bumper was crunched. So I go, yeah. I go, yeah, you hit me. 
And he goes, oh, oh no. And then he gets in his car, and I'm afraid he's going to drive away at this point. And he just yells, I need to pull closer to the curb. And then proceeds to back up right up onto the curb. And that's when I realized this man probably shouldn't be driving. Before that collision, the only other accident that, like, that was serious that I'd ever been in was just with me in a guardrail in a snowstorm on my way to my old job. My old job was at a, a call center. I don't know if any of you out there listening has ever, have ever worked at a call center, but I found it to be the most soul-crushing job I've ever had. I worked at a very big one for a very big company, so I had to take like over 40 calls a day minimum, and it was terrible. And it was one of those call centers that pre-recorded your introduction, so you had to listen to yourself 40 times a day. Also, sometimes when you're sick, you know, the customer can tell that you sound suddenly very different and they comment on it and then you have to tell them that it's a recording and it's awkward. It's an awkward thing. So, you know, 40 times a day, I had to hear myself go, Hello, thank you for calling Waxworks. My name is Dietz. How can I help you? And it was terrible. I don't know how else to put it. How's my phone voice? Do I still got it? Do I still got a good phone voice? So the scary part is I sound cheery, you know, when I'm talking like that. But I don't actually smile when I do it most of the time. You learn to not smile, otherwise your face gets sore. But I worked for a big corporation and they used to do, to do big, big corporate things that didn't help. They didn't help me want to work there. And one of the things they did, one of the things that they did was they put mirrors in all of our cubicles. And on the mirror it said, what you see is what they hear. And I intentionally didn't smile every time I spoke to a customer like that because I was pissed and I can be very spiteful. <laughs> you don't know that about me until now, but I can be very, very spiteful. <laughs> Imagine sitting next to me and hearing, hi, thank you for calling Waxworks. My name is Dietz. Can I have your name, please? And then seeing zero facial expression. I don't work, I don't work in a call center anymore, thank goodness, I've worked in two. My second one was one of those ones where you scam old people into buying uh, tech service they don't need, like tech support they don't need. I always felt so bad about that one. Oh my god, I'm putting my hands over my face because I was so guilty thinking about it. And in my last two weeks when I knew I wasn't going to work there, I just started fixing their problems for free and they couldn't really do anything about it. If they wanted a body there picking up the phone, which is what they really wanted. I mean, they wanted me to make commissions. I never made commission. I'm kind of proud of that. But now I'm 31 years old. And I, I mean, some people don't consider that old, but sometimes I feel old. And it's really weird because I feel like the internet age makes me feel older faster. Like, I, I don't think my parents felt old, like, in the same way that I feel old because of the speed at which internet culture develops. I like to think I'm, I like to think I'm still kind of, you know, on it. I mean, I'm on YouTube and TikTok and... I like memes. I mean, I really like vines, but those are dead, sadly. But recently, one of the things, one of the things that made me feel very old was I was watching, I think I was watching a react video and it was like a teens react or something. I don't know. And it had to do with memes or something like that. And someone would know it was a try not to laugh. I'm going to ramble on as I try to remember what I was doing. And in one of the videos, someone says yeet and one of the teenagers says, I'm so glad that we're at a point, you know, in time where Yeet can come back. And I'm like, was Yeet gone? Did, did Yeet stop being a thing? Is that the moment at which I realize I am old on the internet is when I still enjoy Yeet? I still think Yeet's funny. I still enjoy e explaining the difference between a Yeet and a Kobe to people. It's fun. But, I mean, I guess there was a period of time in which I was using Yeet and or enjoying Yeet and it was no longer a thing. I, I, missed, I missed the period of time. I enjoyed it and right through it dying and coming back. Random side note, I really like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the movie, so I decided to go and research the comic because I'd never read it. And oh my god, are there a lot of spider Manses? and woman's zizzes, and pigs, and man spiders. That one's weird. Now I know so many things about Spider-Man I didn't need to know, but I know it, and I can't unknow it, and, you know, I close my eyes and just Spider-Man. And also, like, the bad guy is a creature that 
or creatures, like a family of creatures that live off of totems and they decide spider totems are extra delicious, I guess, because there's a lot of Spider-Man. I don't know, but they're like vampires that eat concepts. (laughs) That's the way I, that's what I got out of it. And I don't know if I like that or if I think it's dumb. Can you eat the concept of a spider without eating the spider? Is a Spider-Man enough spider concept to be a full meal? Or would it be better if you ate the concept of a spider in the context of an actual spider? Like that Billie Eilish video where the spider comes out of her mouth. I don't like that video. I don't like spiders. So I didn't, I didn't enjoy, I freaked out a little bit when I saw that. And I was kind of disappointed that the video was so hard for me to watch for that song for You Should See Me in a Crown because I really like that song. And then when I went to go watch the video, I was like, oh no. No, 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 do not want. I believe I just said no so loud a second ago that I spiked into the red. I still can't believe Yeet died when I wasn't looking. You can't take your eyes off of that thing for a second. You can't look away from a meme. Otherwise, suddenly it's meta and then it's dead. And then it comes back and it's like old cool. Does that make the memes that I enjoyed when I was in college old cool? Can I bring those back? Can we duck roll people? Do you guys know what a duck roll is? Now I'm just being an ass. I honestly never want I has cheeseburger to come back. Controversial opinion. I thought those cat memes were annoying. Should we start using the forever alone face again? That was another one I never really enjoyed. Maybe I didn't like old memes. No, I definitely liked some old memes. I gotta think of an old meme I liked. I guess I guess I didn't hate the oh really owl. The oh really owl was okay. You got a little dry after a while. It was a one trick pony. One way monkey. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke from Project Runway. <laughs> I also I also enjoyed the Velociraptor. I feel like he doesn't he doesn't get like he's not something that could ever die with the times. He's timeless. Velociraptor is timeless. And there are some things that I will bring up because of nostalgia, and I still enjoy because of nostalgia, but I do not want to ever come back. And most of it is from videos on the internet before YouTube, stuff from Newgrounds and Albino Black Sheep that were pretty much all we had. So they were the funniest thing we had and they aren't funny. I watched them again once. Disappointment. True disappointment. I still have a lot of nostalgia though, so I still enjoyed it. But on a logical level, I understood why uh, someone who didn't know it wouldn't enjoy it but I still sing milk and cereal under my breath every once in a while. I should probably do like a YouTube thing, a thing that other YouTubers do. So uh, comment your favorite old meme in the comments below and maybe I'll tell you if I think it's actually old or not based on how old I am. Let's just say if it's not around Leroy Jenkins, it's not old. If it's before Leroy Jenkins, it's old. If it's after Leroy Jenkins, it's up for debate. Sometimes the meme culture moves so fast that it makes me feel so old that something as silly as an article that's like I saw an article once about old memes. And, And this isn't really even a comment on my age. It's partly like, you know, the internet moves fast. But they were listing a bunch of old memes and they listed Leroy Jenkins and the image or the gif that they used was not the original Leroy Jenkins clip. It was from Zelda and it was a tangential or an adjacent meme where Leroy Jenkins being on the screen, you know, was a joke and it made sense. But why couldn't they find the actual clip for the example? And I came to the realization that the person who wrote the article might not be old enough to remember where it came from. And it hurt me. I'm getting so like up here about this meme thing that I'm I'm losing my ability to speak. I'm just going blah 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 blah. I'm old the memes. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like this is this is the new form of the old person on the porch being like get off my lawn. But it's like God my memes. Ooh, I I just read completely read it out my my microphone bar <laughs> my microphone bar. I don't I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how any of this equipment works. But I do I do like to think I like to think that that coming generations, including mine, 
will continue to be closer to the younger generation simply because the internet exists and we're all slowly coalescing into one collective consciousness, mostly through memes, partly through opinion articles, but mostly through memes. I can enjoy and relate to a joke that somebody like 15 years my junior makes. I mean, and even though, and even though I enjoy the jokes that like Gen Z is making, they're older than 15 now though. But anyway, I enjoy the jokes. I can still tell the difference between a millennial and a Gen Zers joke. I enjoy both, but I can point at one and be like, that's a millennial. <laughs> a lot of the millennial jokes are jokes about like Gen Zers being like, ah, meme humor, ah, and the millennial coming into the joke and being like, yeah, you go, kid. <laughs> Those make me laugh. Space whale. Space whale. <laughs> yeah. This is my future bedroom, and as you can see. So, as you can see. So we've been we've been rebuilding the third floor for a while. Uh and I haven't really had a place to work. This will be my office one day. This is where I'm gonna keep my demons. All of the demons in my head. Got lots of room for them now. So I don't really have a lot of time or space. And I'm trying to get videos out because I really like making them and I'm still making TikToks. Uh, so videos are just going to come as they are finished. And it's, it's not going to be on a monthly schedule or anything, which is what I kind of what I was trying to do, but it's not, it's not working out. <laughs> I'm getting very distracted. I'm distracting myself. Why am I so easily distracted? It could be ADHD. You know, maybe. Um, the content's still gonna be put out. Uh, I'm not gonna stop. I have no plans on stopping. I just figured I'd let you guys know that. I figured I'd let you guys know that it's gonna be, uh, you know, maybe a little slow, but it's coming along. Also, I have a, uh, a Patreon now, and I still have a Kofi, but I don't feel like people really use Kofi, so I made a Patreon, even though I like Kofi better, and the link is below, you know, in case you feel like help, helping me out while I'm getting, getting all this done. <laughs> I can't promise faster videos if you do. Oh yeah, you like my shirt? It is Starboy. Starboy shirt. Link below as well, from Redbubble. Made by dust. I like found footage. Found footage. Ooh, ghosts. <laughs> uh. I'm covered in powder. I hate powder. Get chalky. <laughs>